Um, what does it all mean? How do we translate what is going on in terms of voting, intentions, outcomes, the curious first-past-the-post system? Uh, let's speak to Joe Twyman. He's, of course, co-founder of Delta Poll. Um, it's interesting, Joe. Uh, I'm sure you're, as somebody who does this for a living, equally as fascinated by how this all pans out. But as our texter just said, you get fewer votes than 2019, and in 2019 there was a landslide for the other side. You can't make that up. Uh, well, with our voting system, you can, yeah. and Labour have. Uh, the way to think about it is in terms of vote efficiency. In other words, how much bang do you get for your buck? In both 2019 and 2017, at those general elections, Labour needed to get around about 50,000 votes to win each seat on, uh, on average. In, uh, in 2024, that figure was 23,500, so the vote was more than double the efficiency this time around. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it meant that they were able to get far more seats, a, uh, a landslide, uh, but it also meant that their efficiency was much greater than that of the Conservatives, and certainly Reform, who needed a million votes per seat on average, yeah. which, uh, which really emphasises the differences between the parties. And I think that's reflective of the broader trend that we saw in these, uh, in these results, which is that the vote for Labour and Conservative was down significantly. That Labour and Conservative combined vote was 56.4%. The previous low was 65 percent wow. in 2010 so it's not just lower it's lower by some distance indeed um and it's interesting isn't it i, I don't know what we extrapolate in terms of political appetite because obviously if you go across the board and say all of those people that based on the people that went to the voting booths and cast their vote there is a greater appetite for reform than there is for the lib dems the system however precludes that transposing into westminster success Yes, that's right. And you can't really make that comparison because we don't know how the Lib Dems would have performed if it was simply a matter of getting out as many votes as they possibly could. What the Lib Dems were very good at, and indeed the Greens and, uh, uh, and to a lesser extent Plaid, they were really good at targeting the constituencies where they could win. The question for reform now is over the next five years, over the duration of this parliament, will they be able to turn into the kind of party that can win in a number of seats. Because if they had replicated the efficiency of Labour, they would have won 174 seats. So it really does make a huge difference if you can target that. But that assumes, of course, that you have the kind of, uh, the kind of base that, uh, that can be built up. What reform may find is that, uh, is that once the anti-Tory vote has, uh, has declined, people may go back to the Conservatives, or they may not. Yeah. We'll find out. We will. Pat McFadden, I should just add, some breaking news has just gone into Downing Street now. That's two. Now, Mr McFadden, of course, been a Labour MP since 2005, I think. Uh, very close, Joe, to Keir Starmer. This was the, the man that really did have his ear. Uh, yes, absolutely. And, uh, and in many ways, you could point to people like Pat McFadden within Parliament, and then people like Morgan McSweeney outside of Parliament, who have really been instrumental in this, uh, in turning this uh, Labour Party around in its electoral fortunes in, in a way and uh, with a speed that many people simply thought would not be possible. Uh, another bit of breaking news, the Reform Party are making some announcements in uh, Westminster where a protester has just been um, removed uh, who was shouting something at Nigel Farage. Uh, and of course, if you're going to shout something at a politician, um, d don't choose the one that couldn't care less any more than Nigel Farage, Joe, because he deals with that kind of stuff rather well. Uh, yes, that's right, providing it was just shouting, I'm sure he'll be able to... Yes, I think it, 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 it seemed to be. It seemed to be. I mean, in terms of their presence, four people does not make um, a convincing opposition just by dint of numbers, Joe, uh, but they can still make a lot of noise, and, of course, what they do have is the man who's the most bookable face in British politics who will be able to punch way above his weight in terms of appearances, and that is Nigel Farage, who we just mentioned. Yes, that's right. I think in numerical terms, it's likely that actually the left of the Labour Party is probably going to be the most effective opposition, certainly uh, for, the next few, uh, for the next few months uh, in Parliament than, uh, than certainly the, uh, the four people that Reform have, or indeed the four people that Greens have, or the four people that Plaid Cymru have. Yeah. But... 
of all of those, it's Nigel Farage who's the most experienced and the most effective, uh, effective communicator. And uh, the, uh, the presence in Parliament means that certain, uh, certain privileges are now, uh, are now afforded reform that they didn't previously have, and, uh, and various campaign money goes to them and, and so okay. on and so forth, based not just on their seats, but on their votes. All right, there it is. Joe, thank you very much indeed. That is